Hello everybody and welcome back to Silver Run. Welcome back to another day and another day to make some money hopefully. But today we have a little bit uh, something different um, but we'll get into that right away. Um, in the last episode we uh, did some more tree clearing right here on our property. Um, this uh, thing is still a equipment rental so yeah I kind of need to, <laughs> to make uh, the best of it while it's here but I'm getting uh, sidetracked with actual paying jobs all the time so uh, the thing just sits here and uh, costs me money um, obviously I'm paying a fee per day and also per operating hour so um, at least uh, I don't pay anything uh, for the operating hours while it sits here but I still pay a fee per day so um, yeah but I will uh, keep this for a couple of more days um, because I want to do some more clearing. For now I only cleared all the big trees. I thought that uh, the small trees, the little trees, I can cut down with a chainsaw. That's not a problem. Or I just uh, use the wheel loader and push them over. Um, I'm not quite sure which of the small trees I want to remove. So I thought that some of those could stay depending on um, what I do here. The plan is to uh, extend the... Uh, working area uh, for uh, my uh, farm. I mean, as of right now, I'm parking most of my vehicles on the uh, other side of the road, which isn't my property, but uh, yeah, property owner doesn't mind. But uh, eventually, I want to have my vehicles on my own property. And uh, since there aren't many places where the property is somewhat flat uh, and it's all pretty much very steep hills, this is kind of the area where I thought I could. Do some more clearing and maybe uh, a little bit of earth movement and uh, maybe uh, level it a bit off and see if we can uh, store some equipment here uh, for now and eventually build a uh, little um, equipment shed or something i don't know anyways uh the volvo is back i, I drove it back <laughs> it took it took forever but it's here now and uh, yeah we need a solution for that but today today uh, again something different um we are going to drive a, a new truck today, a pretty cool new truck. A buddy of mine also does uh, uh, truck driving and, and logging. And uh, he also is a, I don't know, do they call it owner operator in, in, in the United States or not sure. But anyways, uh, he also owns a truck and uh, unfortunately uh, he has to deal with some family stuff right now. So he is away for a couple of days and... Uh, was a bit unpredictable so he already took a job and uh, he asked me if I could do that for him and I gladly accepted because this is the truck we are going to drive today it's a Volvo it's a Volvo with a long nose and um, it's a six-wheel drive so all, all the axles are driven it's it's a pretty cool machine I've seen it once or twice before and I never never was able to uh, actually drive it. I asked him if I could drive it someday and he said, yeah, probably someday. So today is the day, but we're not going to uh, just drive it. We are actually going to uh, work with the truck today. We have a um, little log delivery to do. Um, have to drive some uh, logs down from a mountain. And this is going to be very interesting because uh, there's an excavator up there with a grapple. And he said that uh, I'm allowed to use the excavator. And uh, the plan, or his plan, was to drive the truck, actually drive the truck up there, all the way up the hill, and use the excavator to load it. So no um, lock carrying transporter like I did it, but driving the truck all the way up the hill. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of scared because I don't know. Um, I need to see how many gears does this thing have. Um, okay, 11, 12... Okay, 12 gears. Great, so let's start out in uh, six maybe. No, that's way too fast, that was not great. So we need to start out in the uh, second gear probably. First one is a creeper gear or a, a very low gear. Does it drive? Yes, it does drive. Okay. Oh no, I know what issue is. Some issue with the um, hydraulic lines. Yep. Hydraulic, not hydraulic, air, airlines. Airline can be loose. Now it should be. Yes, now it actually drives. So, yeah, we're going to see 
Oh, a brand new truck drives. I'm really looking forward to this. And, um... Again, I'm also a bit scared. So... Before we go there, let's just have a quick look at a map. And uh, see where we need to go. We need to go all the way up here. So we are here. So basically just... Uh, to the left and stay on the road. And then we need to... I'm not sure if we can drive up here. I am. He said that I should take uh, another uh, road, and I think he meant this one because this here is uh, very steep. But there's a, a sharp corner. I'm not sure if you can go around. So it's it's uh, it's going to be very interesting, uh, to say the least. Um, but I guess we will be driving up there now, and uh, let's do some in cap driving. But for in-cap driving I obviously need... Oh no, why didn't I? Head tracking. Why is there a cable in the way? Yeah. I'm not a professional, that's very obvious. <laughs> Always the same. So, um... Need to resend. Yeah, that's, that's more I like it. So... It's very quiet in here. It's so quiet. And this thing had power. A lot of power, actually. Way more power. I wouldn't say way more power than my old Mac. But it feels a lot more powerful. Probably because it's so quiet, so... It feels like you're going faster than you actually are. I don't know. Pretty cool truck either way. Okay. Quite a steep hill here. Now you can show how much power it has. Okay, we can't overtake the car. I mean, it would have been funny, but... Yeah, we need to downshift a bit. <laughs> need to downshift a lot. Still, still a nice truck to drive, actually. Really looking forward to the... <laughs> to the... Uh, using the... Actually using the six-wheel drive. And not getting stuck, hopefully. That would be embarrassing. Okay, that was weird. I had that happen multiple times now. There seems to be some sort of collision on the side of the road. Okay, I did. Why is this? Why is there no... G what is going on? Oh, yeah. I was in the wrong range. So obviously, new truck is a little bit of a mystery. So I think we are going to try the uh, direct path right here. And if that doesn't work out, we need to find something else probably. So, I guess I'm doing a little bit of a fourth wall break here. In the uh, last episode, we did have a talk about realism. And uh, especially in the time lapse of uh, loading the trailer, I think it was very obvious that the logs moved a lot and glitched a lot. So, um, when I play uh, like that and uh, stuff happens, okay, that looks too much of a nope. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I mean, it has quite a bit of ground clearance, but I nope. I don't want to destroy the truck, so we need to go back. Um, yeah, where, where, where was I? Um, playing in real t time, you don't really see how the logs move on the trailer and stuff like that. But uh, unfortunately, in the time lapse, it was very obvious that uh, the logs have moved forward on the trailer after I loaded them, probably. Uh, half a meter or a meter or even more and uh, unfortunately unfortunately also uh, the truck has moved the trailer has moved um, 
all the locks on the trailer, even those who, uh, even those uh, that did not move as much, um, have been glitching, almost like dancing, moving left, right, left, right. Uh, really weird. Um, I actually never saw a behavior like that in a time lapse before, but again, I didn't do a lot of logging in uh, previous farms inversions, so um, I mostly did uh, bale loading and stuff. And I mean, moving and glitching bales is nothing new, but not like that. Um, but going back to that topic, uh, we are going to see base game equipment now. Um, the trailer was a mod trailer, the truck is a mod truck. Um, obviously the Volvo isn't uh, a mod, it's a base game, but uh, I've read it multiple times now that the Volvo um, tree hauling machine, I still have no idea what it's called. Is it a skidder? Maybe a skidder. Um, although it doesn't skid lock, so what is it called? Anyways, um, I've read that multiple times now that the uh, Volvo is the worst out of all the new Platinum uh, machines the grapple does work the least uh, least well so um yeah i kind of kind of want to try uh with, with this uh this right now if for some reason the trail is just bad so before i talk about yeah physics are still horrible and there's no fun and stuff i think i have to do a proper experiment so this is it um, base game truck, platinum truck, platinum trailer, and a different uh, loading method, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So, yeah, uh, be prepared for the time lapse and uh, just uh, watch the logs and see if the logs uh, move as much or maybe less. Uh, maybe it's a trailer issue, I mean, could be. So, yeah, so far, uh, no issues. All wheel drive, very nice. Um, Luckily, uh, we didn't have a lot of rain because otherwise, I guess, a, l a lot of mud would destroy this road pretty quickly. But so far, so good. And uh, I think here we are. Now, uh, this is the uh, loading equipment. It's a excavator with a grapple on it. So, I'm not sure where to park the truck for now. I guess I parked the truck slightly to the left of the road and uh, just set the excavator in the middle. I think that's, that's probably fine. Um, Stop that. So apparently uh, the key is in the excavator. Um, hopefully it is. But then again we are somewhere up here in the mountains. Uh, people don't usually come by and steal excavators. So, Yep, it's open. Key's in. Let's see. Okay, it starts. That's, that's good. Let's see if I... Uh, Get controls if the controls are the same as on um, the uh, harvester. Up, down, turning. Okay, I think this is called the curl, but I'm not sure. Okay, yes, control seems fine, seems okay. So let's just move the thing over to the trees <laughs> and see if we can load it. Um, now looking at this, maybe uh, I should have should have left more room because I uh, yeah I think it's a bit okay that expert is actually huge so let's just um, if you can nope so I think I want to move the expert a bit more into that direction here. For some reason it doesn't want to drive now. I don't know what's wrong here. Um, what am I doing wrong? Come on, drive! Why? Why you not drive? Right now it does. Weird. Anyways, um, let's try to load some locks here. I'm not sure where to position the camera. Okay, camera moves with the with the, the turning, so that's obviously 
not great for time lapse. But I can't really do this camera, so I guess I have to kind of do uh, this uh, camera angle and just hope it works fine for the time lapse. Now the good thing is that this thing uh, can rotate 360 degrees. So not like on the old Volvo. Okay, controls are rather finicky. It doesn't... Okay, it does go further than this. Okay. Now we have the same issue here. Um, the trees are so tight together that uh, I can't get a grapple in between them. Okay, now it worked. Very nice. So... Oh, oh no, that's not great. Um, again, I think we need to kind of move the camera a bit. Okay, that's... This is a fail. There's a fail already. A um, little bit more to that side, a little bit more to that side. Maybe all the way back. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, that's completely wrong. Obviously the trees are a bit too... too short. Maybe right here? I guess that's fine. Just open this. Close it again. Turn it a bit. So, maybe this camera angle. Okay, we still have the issue that uh, the camera will go into the tree. So, maybe do a bit more of a camera angle like this. This could work. Anyways, uh, time lapse time. See you right away. So far, so fun, I guess, uh, in relation to uh, the trailer. It seems to work better than uh, the mod trailer. The, the trees are pretty much, uh, well, I don't know if they are very stable, but they are pretty stable at the position where I put them, although I looks like they've moved a little bit to the rear, but I'm not sure. But right now I'm having a completely different issue. 
um, the grapple bone closed, so it will open fine. But as you can see, only one side of the grapple moves, the other side is completely stuck. I don't know what's going on. Um, maybe if I push it into the ground somehow, it will get unstuck, I don't know. Um, I don't know how uh, this could happen. Uh, my guess is that uh, maybe the grapple thinks that I'm that there's still a tree there or something like that and doesn't move for that reason, I don't know. Or so maybe if we uh, get other trees. Well, uh, it does not work. Uh, one guess would be what if we try to pick up two trees, maybe we can get it unstuck. I don't know. Right now it doesn't move at all. Doesn't close. Okay, we completely bricked it now. I'm I'm pressing the closing button right now and nothing happens. So, okay. Uh, we managed to somehow brick the grapple. I have no idea what to do now. Right. Um, probably a reload of the game. I guess. So, yeah, just uh, put some ratchet straps on there. Hope that the reload doesn't throw the locks off the trailer. And uh, be right back. Alright, so I haven't tested it yet. So I'm going to test the gravel life together with you. Oh, it unbreaked itself. That's nice. That's nice. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong here. Um, now I have uh, flickering, flickering bushes. Ah, oh, I just love this game. <laughs> no, I, I really do. But sometimes some bugs are really annoying. I'll be to be honest. The flickering of of the season textures. I mean, it's uh, it's all the stuff that changes with with the uh, seasons uh, season related changes. Um, that starts flickering. I mean, it's, it's some sort of shader issue, I suppose, or some sort of script issue. But I would guess it's some sort of shader issue. All right, I bricked it again. Great. But now the lock is on. Um, e what? Okay. Now it's unbricked. That was weird. Um, but I have an idea. Let me let me just test something real quick. Um, all right. No, I thought maybe if I uh, touch the um, the wheels, the hidden wheels, the physical wheels, or the uh, tracks of the excavator, that uh, this might break the um, the grapple, but uh, it did not. So I don't know what's going on here. Um, anyways, that was just an idea. Let's just move those over there because we need to uh, try and catch only one of those now. Um, I wanted to. Oh yeah, right. The season season text of stuff. I mean, it's a bug uh, since the beginning, and we are now on I don't know patch one seven or something, and they still haven't figured it out. Um, it's kind of frustrating, actually. I think um, I'm generally not uh, not uh, somebody who um, complains about uh, bugs because most bugs. Are actually get fixed rather quickly and uh, bugs that don't get fixed are usually minor stuff I mean the the, the tree handling and and uh, log handling and bale handling stuff that's obviously something huge and that has hasn't necessarily been a bug on itself but just generally bad throughout all the versions and even though it's much better now it's still uh, far away from good and I mean I think this uh, this right here is a perfect demonstration of Though I have to say that with this uh, trailer it seems to be much better now, so that's that at least. Um, but still, uh, the handling could be much improved. Um, I don't know how. Um, I mean, uh, I don't think that uh, Giants didn't try hard. I think they tried a lot, um, but I don't know where the issue actually is. Uh, so. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, I need to I need to finish the first thought because before I start the second one, now uh, we have three trees. That's oh great, that seems to work. So as far as uh, that goes, um, I can at least uh, can at least say that the grapple on this thing works a lot better than the grapple on the little Volvo. I mean, I can uh, 
load multiple trees, they don't glitch out, they don't move. Uh, it seems like this grapple attaches the trees. And I feel like the Volvo grapple doesn't properly attach the trees when the grapple is closed. Um, okay, this was really messed up now. Um, how do I fix this? Maybe I can fix it. I think I can fix it. Or at least make it a little bit better. Yeah, and now these ones. Yeah, I fixed it. Kind of. I mean, I guess that's close enough. Um, so I have a feeling that the uh, Volvo Grapple doesn't really attach the trees, uh, but uh, does it uh, relies on physics alone to uh, keep the trees within the Grapple, or maybe the attachment just isn't very strong um, compared to this. I mean, now I have three trees and uh, they are very obviously attached because the physics is aren't well enough or aren't good enough to um, actually uh, make trees stay in a Grapple like that. So. Um, if there was no attacher, they would just glitch out. So I guess uh, there is some kind of attacher system at work here. And it seems to work on this uh, grapple. And it seems to work much better than on the Volvo. So I'm not sure if the Volvo doesn't have an attacher. Or if it's just um, set up rather weakly. I guess there's a value um, as to how much attach force is used and stuff like that. Um, I need to finish the other sort first. The other sort was, uh, again... Um, yeah, I, I really, I dream of a farm sim where the physics, uh, the bail physics are good enough and uh, the lock physics are good enough to actually work properly. Um, but other than that, I'm really uh, not uh, not too worried about bugs usually because, uh, again, uh, bigger bugs are generally getting fixed uh, and uh, smaller bugs, uh, I don't care. I mean, um, a lot of stuff can be worked around with, uh, worked around. Um, and I uh, actually I'm much more frustrated by uh, buggy mods and uh, errors and mistakes and mods that aren't set up properly and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, but uh, this uh, whole season's changing uh, shader thing, uh, flickering textures is is extremely frustrating. Again, I'm pretty sure it has something to do with uh, the season's changing and the season shader because it only happens to uh, stuff that is affected by uh, those shaders. Um, Sometimes the foliage flickers and the foliage is also affected by season change as far as I know. Um, at least for the snow covering. And uh, the trees are and other stuff. So I think it's it's uh, something to do with uh, either the snow covering shader or the season change shader. And I just can't figure out. I can't... Um, what's the right word here? I can't believe shines haven't figured it out right yet. Um, I mean, again, I have no idea what it is. But... I'm not a game developer and I didn't write the shaders and again um, patch 1.7 now so it's seven seven major patches in and the bug has been known since day one and apparently still no solution and to me no solution probably means that the, the bug hasn't been found yet so um, I guess once the bug is found they're probably going to figure out a solution uh, because why wouldn't they? Um, they aren't bad programmers, they are good programmers and again if there was some sort of issue or uh, something they couldn't figure out they could try to hire somebody or something so um, I don't think that's a problem. I think the problem is that they still haven't found the root of the bug. They still haven't figured out what actually causes it or where it is and that is something I don't really understand because I mean the bug happens all the time to me. Um, not not every time I play, but uh, every couple of times. So I think it's something that is uh, reproducible quite easily. And it happens to a lot of people. So I don't really get how a bug like that can be uh, in the game for so long and not figure it uh, out. So I don't know. Uh, maybe there's something I'm missing. Uh, maybe, there's, uh, maybe they actually know where the bug is, but can't fix it due to some engine constraints or something like that. Um, I don't know. But again, for me personally, this is actually a very very frustrating bug and probably the only bug i'm actually frustrated about um anyways uh it seems to have vanished now no more flickering so okay that's fine um back to the actual topic i wanted to talk about the uh, physics uh, physics and the attacher stuff because uh, again the physics of the game aren't good um they are actually uh, rather weird uh, rather weak uh, physics physically physics so um the, uh, the actual physical calculations are rather weak. Um, they are comically bad, um, but I don't think that's something uh, to do with farm sim or a bad engine. Um, physics are always an issue. Um, obviously, there are physics engines out there which uh, have 
their only purpose is calculating physics and they are much better at calculating physics but they don't, any, don't, don't do anything else they don't do good graphics and they don't do uh, crops growth and stuff like that so um, in general most game engines are bad at physics because uh, real physics calculations one, one big issue for example is the tick rate um, FarmSim has a tick rate of uh, I think between uh, 30 and 60 um, in single player and uh, that's actually quite high um, but obviously not high enough to do proper physics calculation I mean uh, tick rate in uh, in relation to how often is the game updated how often are the physics updated I mean the, the visuals are updated uh, according to frame rate um, right now I have between 50 and 60 um, so that will be the tick rate for uh, the, the visuals or uh, the frame per second and the physics calculations or the script calculations also have a tick rate uh, frame rate so to speak and it is not coupled to uh, the actual frame rate but it's, it's related to the actual frame rate so um, if the actual frame rate is low um, the tick rate of the physics is also lower so that means that if you play with um, really bad frame rates anyways we need to downshift here if you play on uh, on a computer with lo uh, low frame rate like 10 15 frames or 20 frames or 25 frames basically everything below 30 will also reduce the tick rate which means that your physics calculation will be worse um, but again if you play with 60 frames i don't think that the tick rate is actually 60 i think it's somewhere between 30 and 40. Um, so um, yeah in uh, any case what i wanted to say is that's not a farm sim issue that is a general game physics uh, issue um, you just don't get realistic physics um, you get approximations of realistic physics and uh, there are a lot of tricks and other games also use a lot of tricks um, obviously uh, any kind of shooter game or FPS game um, uses a lot of uh, wait a minute let's just see if we where we need to uh, drop the locks um, somewhere in the south so that's just fine um, where was I where was I Quite a turbo whistle this truck has. Unfortunately, it doesn't really have a load sound, or the, the load sound isn't really um, much different to the non-load, so it kind of sounds the same. Um, all right, we are way too fast already going down this hill. Something like a track break would be nice in farm sim. <laughs> um, back to back to the actual topic: uh, physics, physics of games. Um, there's a lot of trickery involved usually. I mean, in FPS games you have uh, bullet physics and stuff like that, so you need very accurate calculations for that. You need very accurately, you need to very accurately calculate the path of the bullets and stuff like that. But most games don't do that. Most games uh, use a predefined uh, stuff, um, predefined path, and still, um, it's a rather simple calculation compared to uh, calculating physical interaction between objects. Um, physical interaction between objects is always a huge, huge issue to uh, uh, set up properly in a game. Um, dynamic objects that move and interact uh, with each other, um, that's just an issue because uh, due to the nature of uh, the values always changing, I think. I don't know anything about it. I mean, I'm not a game developer, but I'm just uh, doing some modding sometimes, so um, I don't know too much about the physics, uh, the actual uh, how, how the stuff is related but I can I just imagine that it is hard to calculate uh, moving uh, entities um, that relate to each other uh, in uh, a way that uh, it actually works really well and um, stuff moves and uh, you only got like 30 frames or something to calculate that so even if something moves slowly it already has moved a lot between one frame to the next which then uh, can obviously ha um, uh, what's the right word here so glitches might happen because uh, well it has moved too much to uh, be related to another object that, uh, while it would have been moved while it would have moved between the frames it would have touched another object but it didn't because uh, there is no frame between so yeah I don't know if you understand uh, what I'm trying to say um, I'm not really good at explaining what I mean but again due uh, to the low tick rate um, glitches will happen and uh, physics will be bad so general physics where objects 
touch each other, like, for example, a grapple that has to grab onto a tree or something, that is always going to be an issue. And I don't think that is something uh, only Farm Dimension has to deal with. That is something all engines have to deal with. And engines need to, uh, or the game developers need to find tricks to work around that. And I mean, in Farm Sim, we do have attachers. It's, it's all attachers. Um, it's called dynamic mount attachers in the script uh, uh, and in the XML. And uh, all the loading stuff has dynamic mount attachers. So the uh, bale uh, spikes and all of those uh, those things have dynamic mount attachers. So um, there is a calculation that calculates uh, how far, um, uh, how the objects touch, how the, the intersection between the collision of the bale fork and the collision of the bale is, and uh, According to that, calculates an attached force, and uh, so if you move, uh, if you uh, spike a bale, the bale is actually uh, in this very moment. As soon as you touch the bale, is starting to get attached to the uh, bale uh, spike, and um, is uh, basically there's a force necessary to move the bale in relation to the bale spike uh, to move the attacher basically and. Uh, that's why you can uh, start to move further into the bale and why you also can move the spike out of the bale but uh, the bale still stays on uh, the attachment. It's basically it's like real life because in real life um, there's a friction force between uh, you know, the base spikes and the actual bale which uh, makes sure that the bale stays on uh, the base spike. So it kind of simulates uh, a friction uh, force between the spike and the bale and um, so that it's it's kind of cheating because it doesn't calculate extra friction forces, but it, it just fakes stuff. But uh, it's good enough. Again, I mean, 30, 30 tick, uh, ticks per second or something like that. So, um, and it's it's similar on the grapples. So the grapples, as soon as they touch a lock, uh, the lock gets attached, and uh, as soon as the grapple opens, the attacher uh, removes itself. Um, but apparently, uh, it's still not good enough. So that is basically basically the the the, the the thing here um, in order to uh, make this better I don't think actual physics improvements are something although actual physics improvements need to happen because uh, I mean that's a whole different topic but um, bales uh, moving bales for example if you have uh, bales in a shed or something um, there's a entirely different issue and that is uh, sleeping and waking up of objects um, Obviously, a lot of dynamic objects are on the map. I mean, all the bales and all the stuff that can be moved. And if you imagine that the position of those objects and the collisions and everything that is involved in those physics would have to be calculated all the time, that would be a lot of performance. You need to calculate all of that. So um, what Giants does is uh, they put objects to sleep, basically, um, as soon as you move away from them. Um, I think it's... Uh, I don't have any actual values, but uh, from from uh, looking at stuff, um, I feel like it's something like five meters or something like that. Um, as soon as you move away from an object, it basically it falls asleep. It doesn't uh, calculate any more physics. It's just there. It's just static at that point. And if you move closer to the object again, it wakes up. And each time the object falls asleep and wakes up again, it moves. It moves slightly due to some uh, like um, residual velocity that is still kept when the object is falling asleep or do, due to some rounding errors. Um, I don't know what the exact reason is, but stuff moves. It moves slightly. Which means that eventually, if uh, an object falls asleep and wakes up often enough, it will come to a point where uh, it has moved enough to cause issues. And that is why uh, bail stacks start to uh, explode, basically. Um, I don't think that's the only reason. Um, I mean, there's other rounding issues with the positions of bales and maybe just reloading the game might cause something. But in general, if you uh, have a bale stack that is far away from the area where you usually are, um, it lasts a long time. And if you have a bale stack in a shed where you uh, drive in and out all the time, um, chances are pretty high that at some point something's moved far enough or in a position where it basically uh, explodes the entire bale stack. And you can also uh, see this um, on uh, trailers. If you try to load a bale trail or a log trailer, I mean, it always starts to move a little bit. And uh, if you go away from it, uh, it starts to fall asleep and the entire physics calculation is stopped. And if you get close to it, it wakes up again and starts moving. And um, yeah, stuff like that, I think, needs improvement. Um, I don't think there's any reason why uh, this should happen. I don't think there's any reason why uh, putting uh, the physics 
uh, at ho to halt or pause and restarting them should cause the object to move. And uh, I think uh, the other issue is uh, basically uh, trailers that move and, and uh, that's all physics issues, issues with um, uh, in relation to uh, weights and weight differences and center of mass stuff. And I mean, whoops, I need to use a clutch on this. I forgot. Um, you can do a lot by changing center of mass and by changing um, the uh, actual actual uh, mass of a vehicle. You can uh, kind of, you can't remove the, the, the glitching of trailers. Um, they still will move when loading and stuff like that, but you can minimize it. Um, but it's still there. So I think in, in that way, physics improvements are actually necessary. But I think uh, in terms of um, fail physics and, and log physics and stuff like that, I think it's mostly improvements regarding the attachers that would be necessary. Attachers that act and fake um, the actual physical interaction better. So I think that's that's basically the, the main issue that needs addressing. And uh, I think... Uh, Giants didn't do a bad job comparing the uh, first dynamic mount attacher from uh, FS15. Um, I think, yeah, though, uh, FS15 had... And I know there was a German word in there. <laughs> Too much to think about at the same time right now because I'm concentrating on unloading the logs and also um, thinking about what I what I was saying. Um, and yeah, I lost a few. And uh, that's <laughs> that's very, very physically realistic here. Um, let's just not talk about that for now. Um, what was I talking about? Right. Um, in FS15, we had the first dynamic mount attachers, and I'm not sure if it was a base game thing or a mod thing. It might as well be a mod, uh, only, only a mod. I'm not sure. Maybe it was a mod in FS13, and in FS15 it uh, came standard. Anyways, um, FS15 was the first uh, dynamic mount attacher stuff. Uh, as far as I can remember, and it was horrible compared to today. I mean, it still works worked the same. So you basically um, had had a, a po ability to drive a bale spike into a bale, and it would actually uh, lock the bale onto the um, fog. And the idea was was pretty good, but uh, it was bad. So stuff kept sticking to the bale spikes or not attaching. And compared to that. FS17 was a huge improvement. I think uh, bail handling in FS17 was actually uh, better than in any uh, later games due to a very simple effect. Um, as far as I feel like, I mean, I don't have any uh, actual evidence for that. It's just uh, the way I played and I, uh, I uh, observed the game. I feel like uh, the distance where stuff fall asleep and you can you could have seen that you, you saw that right now um, I got close to the lock and the lock started falling so it didn't stay up there because uh, the physics are weird it stayed up there because I was moving away far uh, fast enough to actually uh, activate the sleeping mode on the physics of that lock and now that I moved closer the lock started to fall down um, that distance is rather rather low now and in FS17 the distance was much bigger which in turn meant um, when loading a bale trailer on a field, for example, um, you could drive away from the bale trailer um, to get a new bale at the other end of the field. And if the field wasn't too big, the bales on the trailer wouldn't fall asleep while you were gone. That also meant that um, they could move and move each other uh, off uh, of the bale trailer because uh, of just uh, the physical interaction if the bales were too close. Um, they could kind of glitch in, into each other and uh, explode that way, which doesn't happen if uh, they fall asleep. But uh, that also meant that they wouldn't move on their own. They only moved if you actually packed them too close. So if we were careful loading a bale trailer in FS17 and wouldn't uh, pack the bells too close, you could actually uh, load a bale trailer rather nicely. And um, in FS19 they uh, lowered the sleeping distance. Um, and uh, you couldn't. So basically, uh, each time you move away from the bale trailer, uh, when you come back, uh, the bales awake and move a little, which means that in the end, no matter what you do, the bales will have moved on the trailer. And uh, that hasn't been uh, getting any better in FS22. Um, so I, to make a long story short, 
make a long story short, um, the dynamic amount at Tetra is actually uh, pretty good these days. Uh, but obviously it still has some issues as we noticed today with uh, the grapple, although I don't know if the freezing grapple is related to the Tetra. Um, but uh, the Volvo is a pretty good example of um, the, the small Volvo, the, the skitter lock thing thingy. I don't know what to call it. Maybe you can tell me what's the actual name of uh, this machine. Um, but the trees move a lot in, in, uh, in that fork, so the dynamic mount attacher doesn't work as well or not at all, or I don't know. So there's still some improvement, roof improvement. Also loading pallets and stuff. Uh, I mean, sometimes they stick to the forks. So there's still a lot of room for improvement there. Um, and I think there would also be uh, the need for um, dynamic mount attaching onto uh, trailers. Um, as far as I know, there isn't right now. Um, if <laughs> Right as we talk about physics issues, we got a lock that's kind of a little bit stuck. Great. Um, on trailers with uh, tension belts, as far as I know, there is no dynamic mount attached. So that means as soon... Um, the, the locks only get attached if you use the tension belts. Um, there is no automatic attaching with um, like a breakaway force. Um, and I think maybe trailer would, trailers would also need that. I think trailers would also need some sort of dynamic mount attacher to simulate the friction force. Because the friction force of... Uh, it's just not there. Um, I mean, in real life, you have friction force. Um, I mean, locks are quite rough. They have a rough, a rough bark on them. And uh, the friction force between the locks and the um, rungs on the trailer is pretty big. So that usually keeps the locks from moving. And uh, on a trailer, if you put a bale on a trailer, obviously it has a lot of uh, friction area. And stuff like that doesn't work well in game physics. And uh, so I think some fake attaching would be beneficial in that uh, in that case as well so that is something that sh in my opinion should come in the future um, I, I went on a tangent there a complete complete tangent there um, anyways uh, I think the sleeping issue is a real issue um, because yeah, it just makes it impossible to uh, do any uh, proper loading of anything, really, because uh, stuff starts to move as soon as it wakes up, and if it fell asleep and wakes up every other bale or every bale you load, chances are stuff has moved off the trailer <laughs> by the time you are finished. And um, something to add to that, of course, is that the tick rating multiplier is lower, so uh, glitch cells and physics uh, issues are obviously amplified in multiplier. So yeah, there's that too. Um, anyways, back in the day, way before we had dynamic mount attachers, we uh, had static attachers, um, which meant that uh, you drove into a bale, and then you hit a key, and as soon as you hit the key, the bale was statically attached to the uh, fork, and it wouldn't move, nothing, it would be per permanently attached, unless uh, you hit the key again, and at that point it would be um, loosened again. And uh, yeah, that's the way we loaded bales beforehand. That was also a mod that was never a base game thing. Um, base game, uh, a uh, base game, uh, lock spikes, uh, not lock spikes, uh, bale spikes. Oh man, so many confusing things. Um, base game, bale spikes worked on a different level. Base ba game, bale spikes worked uh, in a way that a bale had a collision with a hole in the middle, and you basically uh, the bale was just laying on the spikes and. That did never work well. Um, that was obviously uh, bales were you couldn't really drive a bale on uh, a uh, bale spike because it just moved. Um, so yeah, that's why attached uh, bale spikes were a thing back in the day, and uh, until a dynamic mount attachers came. And I think that the uh, dynamic mount attachers stuff in general is uh, really great um, because well, compared to before, where you basically uh, would be spiking a bale but without any resistance or anything and then hit, have to uh, hit a key and uh, then the reverse to um, unattach it compared to that um, the uh, dynamic mount stuff feels a lot more realistic because you actually have some resistance when uh, it's it basically simulates friction it simulates friction and i think it does it rather well um, just some slight improvement might be necessary but in general i think the dynamic mount attaching stuff actually works rather well. I think uh, the biggest issue with um, loading bales or trees in general 
is actually the waking up and falling asleep of the physics and the moving on the trailer and stuff like that. It's not that uh, the, the, the bail forks are an issue. Anyways, um, huge tension there. Uh, I have another uh, load of locks I need to load. Um, but I think the uh, episode is long enough. I went off on a tangent and talked a lot of uh, stuff you probably didn't want to know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but that's also a part of uh, the Let's Play videos I do. Um, I go off on tangents and talk about stuff. So I guess that's what you get on this channel. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I hope I see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. I wish you a wonderful day. Until next time, bye.